So, we've seen some Byzantine fortifications from the city of Constantinople from my other video on the Theodosian land walls, but what about Ottoman fortifications? The Bosphorus Strait holds two impressive fortresses that were built around 50 years apart, and symbolise the Ottomans' eventual control of this area. In this video, we will take a tour of the largest of these, the Rumeli Hazari Fortress which appears as a large sprawling mass of towers and walls stretched out along the slopes of the hill. Only one year into his reign as Sultan, Murad II was repulsed by the Byzantines in 1422 in an attempt to take the Ottomans' most prized target, Constantinople. Determined not to repeat the same mistakes again, such as a failure to prevent supplies reaching the city, Sultan Mehmed II, better known as the Conqueror, began plans to cut off the city once and for all. Built in 1452, this fortress made it very clear who owned the Bosphorus Strait. It was built as a show of power, as the Ottomans also had Andalo Hizari on the other side, which means they now controlled both sides of this channel of water. Existing at this now peaceful location since the mid-15th century, the Rumeli Hizari Fortress was the product of the preparations from the Ottoman siege of Constantinople in 1453. Although by the time of the siege the Byzantines were in no shape to be able to carry out offensive raids where this castle would have been directly threatened, it fulfilled an important role in making sure supplies from the north were severed. In one incident, a Venetian trading ship attempted to continue on through the straits without stopping, only to be struck by a single shot from a cannon and sunk immediately. The surviving crew were executed as a warning for any other vessels trying to do the same thing. After the Ottomans successfully took the city of Constantinople, the Rumeli Hizari fortress continued in use as a customs checkpoint and a prison in the 17th century, before being opened up to visitors in 1960. The easiest way of getting to the castle is by taking the ferry to the village of Bebek on the banks of the Bosphorus, or by using the T1 metro line to Kabatas, and then one of the bus services that continues up to the castle. Before you reach the large suspension bridge that crosses the Bosphorus, take a stop and the castle's entrance should be to your left. From the waterfront, the castle is an impressive collection of walls and large towers complete with tall crenellations, with the strangest looking walls being those that climb vertically up the hillside with slanted battlements. A tour of the fortress starts through the gate beside one of the largest towers. This was known as the Halil Pasha Tower, a 12-sided tower which was responsible for the cannon shot that sunk the Venetian vessel. Outside there is a lineup of cannons that equipped the fortress over the centuries, and provided its firepower capabilities. As you could see from the outside there, the fortress is under a lot of restoration at the moment, however you are still able to go inside, you just can't go on any of the wall walks. It almost feels like being in a garden, as there are paths that lead off in different directions, with many signs telling you about the different types of trees that you pass. The interior of the castle would have been very different back in its day, complete with a small mosque and wooden houses to shelter the garrison soldiers. Today only a mosque with a single minaret survives, although this is not the original building that stood here, as that was destroyed in an earthquake in 1509. There is also a large seating area arranged similar to the amphitheatres of ancient Greece. 
This fortress is very unusual from your average castle, which a lot of the times they'd be built on flat ground. This one is built literally on the side of the hill, so it's quite a bit of climbing to do. The higher up you go, however, the better the views you get. As you look out from one viewpoint, it is easy to see why this fortress had the delightful nickname of the Throat Slitter, or Straight Cutter, as this fortress could dominate any shipping that tried to make its way through the Bosphorus. Today though, the passenger ferries and huge container ships are able to pass through without any interference. The furthest corners of the castle are dominated by two massive towers, the Zeganashal Pasha Tower to the left of the entrance, and the Saruka Pasha Tower to the right. Each one of these towers was named after one of Mehmed the Conqueror's viziers. This tower was open on my last visit, so although it's closed today for the restorations, I'm still going to be able to show you what it looks like inside. An information board to the side of the path shows you what this tower would have originally looked like back in its day, with multiple floors installed. You can see from this photo where each level would have been, with the large central column supporting the wooden floorboards. Passing by the large curtain walls which are pierced by a number of watchtowers, the final one of these large three towers is reached. Again, this tower used to be open when I last visited, and inside you are able to see a section of the original chain that spanned the Golden Horn, and prevented ships entering this way to the city of Constantinople. Outside this tower there is one of the smaller gateways which would have been used to bring in supplies, or to launch a surprise attack on any enemy forces nearby. One last thing that you can visit here at the Rumeli Hizari Fortress is the castle's source of water, which came from an underground cistern. Watch out though as there's spiderwebs over the main entrance, and I'm sure I almost certainly walked straight into one. Despite its grisly nickname of being the Throat Slitter Castle, the Rumeli Hizari Fortress has welcomed visitors in for decades. With almost intact defensive walls and towers that are only missing the floors within the large towers themselves, it is an impressive fortification to visit. The restoration work may mean that the towers will once again be open to visitors to explore, and if a section of the wall walk could be opened up, it would make a visit to this fortress all the more impressive. There is also the smaller Anadolu Hizari fortress that was built in 1394 on the opposite side of the Bosphorus. However, I had noticed that this was under restoration at the same time, and is one I have yet to visit. If you have enjoyed this video on the Rumeli Hizari fortress, then why not leave a like and follow my channel for more, and I'll bring you many more historical places from around Istanbul as well as many others from around the rest of the world. Over until next time, see you around.